Hello, this is Helen Drew and welcome to today's watercolour project. So this is what we're going to do today, apple blossom on a dark background and you can have a look at the composition. I've chosen to do a square composition but you don't need to do a square composition, you could do a rectangular one if you wish. Notice the composition is the centre of interest, the focal point is all up here and that's because we have the darkest darks next to the lightest lights. So just make sure that your focal point is not right in the middle of your uh, composition. So let's move that one out of the way. And the very easy to draw the um, blossoms so I've drawn out I'm just going to draw it very roughly and very dark so you can actually see it when you do your sketch don't don't do it this dark because it's once you've got the pencil lines on the paper it's not very easy to get rid of them again so the apple blossoms have five petals And what is really important is we draw this little part in here because they go in a bit as they get into the centres of the flower. So that's quite well placed. Then you can add another one and basically, you know, as long as you sort of draw it so it's more or less correct, you just have one that has to be correct and recognisable as a blossom and the others, you yeah, you can... Do your own thing. So we'll have one here and with a bud maybe here and another one maybe here and maybe something here. So you've got a nice one. Then what I'm going to do is draw the branch that they're on going at a diagonal. Important to notice, don't make your branch go off at any of the corners and then we'll have some more blossoms and leaves down in this section here. Now what we're going to do, if you remember, we have the dark background. Okay, so uh, we, we're going to do the dark background first and then we're going to paint the, the flowers afterwards. But if you look at the dark background, I've got lots of other colours coming in to this dark background. And that means that we've got this branch in the foreground, but we've got other branches and other colours and other blossoms that are very um, faded in, in the background. So I'm going to show you that technique today and uh, we'll move the, oh, um, the sketch will be on the site if you want to copy the sketch but basically try by yourself because it, it, they're not a difficult flowers to draw. Okay so next we look at colours and here's my palette and the colours I've chosen to use. You'll need a very dark colour. Now I've got neutral tint but you could use a Payne's Grey, anything that's really dark. And don't forget, you'll need quite a lot of it because it has to be dark. Uh, we don't want it to be a, a mid-tone grey, but then the composition won't work. Another important colour is the pink I'm going to use. Now I'm using a rather old tube of quinacrinone rose, but you can use another colour. Just make sure it's quite a, a bright pink. If you have a bright pink you can always add some neutral tint to it to make it duller but if you start with a dull pink you're not going to get the brights that you want. I've got a little bit of ultramarine because I'm going to perhaps put a little bit of that into the background. I've got some yellow, lemon yellow so I can make a bright green and um, just for speed I'm adding a bit of uh, sap green but you could make quite a nice green for your leaves out of the ultramarine and the lemon yellow. Let's move those onto one side and I've got them already in the palette. The brush is ready. 
So the first thing we're going to do is mix up some paint because we have got quite a large area to cover so what we don't want to do is put on the water and then mix up the paint because the water is going to be drying. So I put clean water into here and I'm going to mix up some green, some black and some pink. The, the neutral tint does have to be a, quite a dark colour because we're putting water on the paper and so we're, if we've already got water on the paper it's going to be diluting. So, yep, yeah, that's as dark as that. Then you need to wash your brush really well and you'll notice that I've got two lots of water. And this is so that I can wash it first in this one and then I can wash it in the second one to make sure it's completely clean. And then I'm going to tip it upside down and I'm going to paint the whole of this area with clean water. Not going into the flowers. the tip of the brush to go around the edges of the flower. Try and print it reasonably quickly because you don't want it to be drying over here before you start getting the paint on. Good, I can see that it's now wet because it's shiny but it's not puddled up so there's not so much water on that it's running around too much you don't need to be have too much on at this stage right so it's the paper is wet but there are not pools of water on the paper and I'm going to tip it into the black and start painting and you'll notice it's moving around because the paper's wet. It should be dark. Don't forget that it will dry lighter. Then you'll notice I've got another brush. I'm going to put in some green here. And maybe a bit of pink. I've got another brush for the pink. I'm going to carry on with the black. It's a little bit too bright, so you can just move your paper around. Catch it all the time. A little bit more green here. And maybe a little bit of blue in the background, just to change the round again. What's quite nice here is take it out a bit. So there'll be a light a bit there.
that's not looking too bad. And uh, the last thing I want to do before I stop for a minute and dry it is just um, I want some of these leaves to. It's a hard edge there, so I don't want it to be quite so hard. Blend those in a little bit to make them a softer edge. Same with this one here, clean water, thin brush, and all you do is run your brush along the edge just to soften up that little flower there. Because I want the eye to come into this area here, I think, at the moment. Just touch the edge of the colour, don't go into it too much. Okay, so now I'm going to dry off the painting and we'll do the other half in a few moments. Okay, so the painting is now dry and with this technique I would actually recommend that you let it dry naturally and you don't use a hairdryer. The danger of using a hairdryer is if your paint is very wet you will blow it around if you use the hairdryer. So just calmly let it dry by itself. So now I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the bottom half. And it's uh, a little bit complicated. There's a shape here that uh, I'm not going to paint in. So there are several little shapes of leaves, but I've cheated by making the leaves touch each other. So I don't have to worry about that and maybe a little here. So if you wanted just to paint a half a bit round here then you could always have another twig maybe coming down here and that means I've only got to paint this side or this side together. That's a really good trick. So let me do this small area here. Now, if they're only the leaf shapes, you only need to paint around them really roughly. I've got some pink in my brush. So leaves that are shapes, just paint around them roughly. The flower shapes here, paint around them reasonably carefully. And I'm going to paint, just stop there because I've got another twig coming down. Exactly the same thing again. Make sure, again, you've got enough pigment in your paint. Red just to give it a bit of balance. And back to grey. I can see that white line. Now we don't want it to be a white line. We've only put that in so that it's easier to paint around it. So I can take out that bit, maybe leave a bit there. Then we carry it on. Again, this bit's now dry, so we paint it again with the
clean, cleanish water. Again, you don't have to be too precise around the leaves. While I'm painting here, do keep an eye on what's happening here. And if anything that you don't like is happening in this area, then uh, go back to it. Lots of water going down there, but I quite like that effect, so I'm going to leave that. still wet so I can actually add paint. Don't add paint if it's starting to dry, then you risk getting cauliflowers. And move it around. And the last bit that I haven't done is this piece here. I'm going to do it with the clean brush. It's not very large. And you'll notice as soon as I touch that black, the, the growth, the, it will go into the green. So it's quite nice to just leave a little tiny white Areas. So you touch it in some areas and not others. brush out completely, take all the, and we'll just have a paler area there, and maybe a paler area there. It's a little bit pink there. I think that's okay for now. So what I'm going to do is dry it again and then we're going on to paint the negative shapes in the flowers. Good, so it's now dry and you will notice that it has dried lighter. So this is it's really important to get enough pigment on to your painting. If it's too light you can paint on it again but it's always more spontaneous if you can get it done the first time rather than waiting for it to dry completely and then putting another layer on. At this stage also uh, stand up and look at your painting from a distance and have a look how it's working out. You'll notice here there's a what we call the happy accident and if you've got some happy accidents, there's another one here that's uh, a really nice effect. If you've got happy accidents, don't paint over them, use them. They are absolutely why we use watercolour. This is the point of the whole thing. So I'm not unhappy with that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to 
fill in the parts in between the flowers. And for that I've taken a, a smaller brush. So again we tip, go into our neutral tint and we just paint in these areas in between and you will notice then that suddenly you have got the flower coming out. I'm using the same colour which is a bit naughty, you do need to change your colour, don't, don't paint them all the same. You can see, so that's, that flower is coming out as a flower shape now. And the other thing I want to do is this large area here. You can leave some tiny little bits of white there. It just looks like the um, centre parts of your leaves. not brown, it's going to be green and the pink. I'm not a great fan of browns. Browns I like to make by adding red and green together. a bit too much blue. Okay, so I'm going to finish this off and then we'll come back and we'll um, put the details into the flowers. Good, so now we're going to work a little bit on the flowers. Um, uh, and maybe add a few more details here and I've forgotten to add that bit of trunk, a bit of 
branch there. Let's add that bit on. Do try this instead of going for a brown, the red and the green. Don't forget the. Uh, we do need it to be darker on the bottom side, so you might need to put a bit more paint down here, just so that it makes it a little bit darker because that's where the the light is coming from. That's okay. A little bit of light. If you get a little bit of light on that bit there, leave it because it just the, the just shows that the light is catching it there. So now we're going to work on the flowers and we're going to um, think first about wh where the light is coming from and which petal is on top and which petal is underneath. So if we can take this flower here, you can see that this petal is on top. So we're going to have to add a shadow to this section here. We're going to do that with a little bit of pink and then we'll add a little bit of the neutral tint. Um, in there. Um, don't start with anything too dark yet because uh, if you make it too dark we're going to have to remove paint but if you make it so it's quite light we can always add another bit. Okay and don't make it too regular. A very important technique now you've got quite a strong edge wash your brush and just soften up that edge. So it's not too strong. Okay, so that now says that this is behind that. That is behind there. Okay, I want to add a bit of colour here. This is the, the flower that we want to be the centre of interest, so we don't want to make it too dark. All the flowers, all the petals will have some colour on them. If you leave them so they're only white, they will look flat. Again, that one comes underneath them with a little bit of shadow in there. And the last thing we need is some A little bit dark, but if you add a little bit of water to the edge, it'll be fine. Pink.
So you can see the shapes of the flowers now. Coming into there. So I want this flower to be the main flower. So you need to add a little bit more colour and shadow to the ones that Good, so what I'm going to do is dry this off now and we'll do the final technique. And the final thing I want to do is to add a few details. So if we take a very uh, thin brush now, this is called Rigger. I particularly like it because it has long bristles, but if you've only got a one with short bristles, as long as it's fairly fine, that's okay. And we will put on some... Okay, notice I'm in the middle and I'm making one stroke upwards. Or downwards in that case. And then we have a little dot. So I'm using the green and then just to put some little dots on the outside to give the centre of the flower some definition. Flick from the centre. Uh, and I think uh, you'll find it, it makes a huge difference when you've got your centres in. You, your, your flower's actually saying something now. Now, then you have a look around at what does it need. Uh, it perhaps needs a little bit more definition there. And um, maybe a little bit here, dark bit here. If you've got an area that you really don't like and you think you've got a problem with it, you can take your white and a very clean brush. gives it a little bit a few highlights as we do and you could put some more definition in, in the background but at this stage as I always say you dry it off put it on one side put it somewhere where you can see it for a couple of days and about what, what it needs and what needs changing and I look at it now and I think well we've got a lot of white here we need a little bit of light over here I'm just going to see if I can take out a bit of paint just have a little bit so it looks as if we've got another Take a little bit of paint out.
that's not too bad. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed painting this and as always uh, if you have a go at this please send me the photograph. Thank you so much for the people who have been sending their photographs and they've been getting a critique um, by email um, afterwards. So I'll see you next time.